Welcome, I made this clear case impact drive. You can clearly see the battery, the motor, the hammer, the trigger, and the main control board. I paid extra effort to make the hammer part extra clear, so you can clearly see when the hammer operating. The battery work as the original way. Every feature working properly, but can it really hammer? Stay tuned to find out. In this video, I will show you how I make the transformation. And the most important part is to show you guys how an impact drive work in real life. I will have the slow-mo footage at the very end of the video. So stay tuned to find out. I disassembled the impact drive I'm using. It's very straightforward. You just need to remove all the screw and one metal clip. Then you can just ply open the case. Then all the components just easily take away. You can just pull apart the hammer and the motor. Take away the rubber ring. Remove the old ring. Gently ply open the cover. Take out the planetary gear and the hammer. Here is the most tedious and difficult parts during disassembly. Trying to remove the retention ring without the proper tool. After I don't know how many trial, I finally get it open and take away the spring and the quick connect head. Make sure you don't lose the two small ball bearing for the locking mechanism. Remove the O-ring. In order to make it look neat and tidy, I need to clean away all the grease. For the hammer, I only clean the parts that will be clearly visible. All the gear will be fully lubricated. Clean up the hammer case. Remove bearing from the hammer case cover. Prepare the case for mold making. Tear apart the battery. Remove all the sticker. Take out the top cap of the battery. I've laser cut all the acrylic board for making the mold box. Peel away the protective frame. Glue all the board together to make the box. Cut the acrylic strip into length and then glue it onto the parts to make the runner. Stick the parts into a clear plastic. It should look like this. Finally, add the bottom runner and then flip it over to put inside the box. Glue the cover and measure the volume to estimate the amount of silicone we need. Weight the silicone. Measure the silicone oil to dilute the silicone. Measure the hardener. Mix them together and start the timer. After mixing, put into the vacuum chamber to degas the silicone. You can see there's a lot of gas bubble coming out from the silicon. Therefore, degassing is a very crucial part of making silicon mold. Now we can start to do the silicon pouring. Remember to pour in slowly and tilt the mold with an angle to eliminate gas bubble. I put the mold together with the leftover to put into the oven to cure it so I can clean it up more easily. The other parts also made similarly. The biggest challenge is to make the mold for the case. I designed the box like this to save silicone. The runner are made as the same way, but since the shape is more complex, so it required more runner. This mold used 700 gram of silicone, which is quite an expensive mold. But one silicone pool was unsuccessful, so totally I made three big mold, and then put inside the oven to cure. 
after the silicone cured, take away the acrylic board. Now we can start to cut open the mold. Silicone inside the hole also need to be cut away. Finally, take out the original case. Check if all the features are captured. Put the acrylic board back to the mold. After mixing the AB part of the epoxy, we can start to do the epoxy pouring using a syringe. Remember to tilt your mold with an angle to eliminate gas bubble. Insert the syringe into the lowest hole and then start to inject the epoxy. When some holes start to overflow, use the acrylic strip to cork it. Until the highest hole got overflowed, which means the whole mold are filled with epoxy. Again, put inside the oven to let it cure. After the epoxy cured, remember to let it cool down to do the demolding because when epoxy is hot, it will be too soft. The parts come out very nice, although there are some debris from the original mold and it's not transparent enough to be impressive. Combined with auto polish and adding clear top coat, I managed to make the case much clearer. Now let's assemble the hammer parts. For those who don't know how impact drive work, I will explain the principle at the slow motion part. Fit the bearing back to the cover and then put it back. Now the hammer are clearly visible. Now put back the quick release mechanism. Put the two small ball bearing back to the hole. Then put back the handle, the spring, and the washer, also the retention ring. Final step is to put everything back to the case, including the LED light and the rotation shifter. And put the other half back, also the screw. Since the screw thread also captured, so the screw can easily be tightened in. Let's test everything. The battery working, also the trigger, the LED, the battery indicator, and the hammers also rotate. So everything is working properly. For those who don't know what is the difference between a normal drill and an impact drive, the simplest explanation is the impact drive is more suitable for screw because it provides not only rotational force but also forward force to push the screw in. So it can prevent slipping when putting screw in. Now let's check out the slow motion footage. At the very beginning, it works like a normal drill. Since the resistance from the screw are minimal at the beginning, when the resistance starts to build up, you can see the hammer is triggered between a few rotations. Finally, the resistance are at the level that every rotation will trigger the hammer to blow. You can see every time when the Phillips head stops rotating, the hammer will go backward and store the energy into the spring and then impact the Phillips head with rotation and forward force. Let me turn on the audio and keep watching. Thanks for watching. If you have any question, please leave it in the comment. Tell me what you want me to transform into clear case. Also tell me in the comment. Finally, and the most important part is to help me to subscribe and like this video. 
See you next time.